I saw a video today of a pastor and this pastor from Brown Missionary Baptist Church. You know how that's how they say it, right? They say missionary, but they're not going to do mission trips at all. You know, they don't go into foreign countries. They don't, they don't do anything, but they, they call it Missionary Baptist Church. Anyway, this is out of South Haven, Mississippi. Now the senior pastor, his name is Bartholomew Orr. Now this guy is going to go up to preach today, but this guy decides to do something that I just really shook my head about. And we really need to start talking about this black church a lot more than what we do. But let's roll this clip. It says that that day is going to come when the sky is cracked and Jesus Christ comes again and every eye will see him when he come again. So here's our question for you this morning, brothers and sisters. The simple question is this right here. Are you ready? Are you ready for his return? Amen. <laughs> All right, amen, amen. Are you ready for his return? Brothers and sisters, are you ready today for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he's on his way back. That is what James was dealing with there. And I appreciate Jerome this morning. I said, Jerome, I'm going to need you this morning. But I appreciate Damon for reading that scripture. Yes, this guy was uh, suspended with that harness. And he's going to float his way all the way down in front of his pulpit. I mean, showboating, grandstanding. I don't know what more to call that. I mean, I guess in 2018, we can't just walk up to the podium and, and give our message anymore. We have to start doing things like that. Now, I guess that's what, you know, tithes is for, you know, because they tell you, you know, you got to donate and give to the man of God and give to the church. And when I'm donating and giving, uh, I'm giving it to God. Mm, uh, no, no, you're not. God don't need nothing from you. Now, if you want to help your church, that's fine. But the people in our community, when are we going to wake up? When are we going to wake up? How many times these people got to act a fool, sleep with people's wives, sleep with people's husbands, um, just living lavishly off of so-called tithes that's supposed to be for the church. They never speak up in the community when it comes to this racism and white supremacy. They don't address the issues of the black family. They don't address the issues that's going on with police brutality. They don't address anything. These preachers are up there putting on a show and entertainment. And what's worse is y'all are sitting in these churches. He's not the only one. Y'all are sitting in these churches every Sunday. And these people could tell you that you need to give 10% of your check to that church house, not once a month, every check. So if you get four checks a month, you gotta give 40%. If you get two checks a month, then you gotta give 20%. And then you say you're doing it for God. That's just amazing to me. That is so amazing. They're not uh, talking to those young brothers on the streets that need some help. They're not doing that. You know, you had these same churches around and crime is all around these churches. But yeah, I thought church was supposed to be the beacon of light. I thought you were supposed to get out there and you say you're missionary. Where, where's your mission trips in, in your city? Where, where is that at? I haven't heard him being on the streets in Mississippi or because if he was on the streets like that, or if he was speaking up against racism and white supremacy, then he wouldn't be having time to do things like this. Not at all. Now he's talking about Jesus coming back and everything. And, and that's, that's one thing, but there's nothing in the Bible telling you, you got to come in and do some things like this. You know, black folks give billions of dollars a week to churches. We put in our money into these churches and look at the black community. It is messed up. If we would actually pool our resources together, like we give into these churches, wow, we could turn over our community overnight economically. We could start business districts. 
We can give, you know, our young children who are smart and just don't have the money to go to uh, college. We can give them, you know, the money to do so. We can do so many different things, build schools. When you're giving, you know, an average of $4 billion a week. Think about that. If black America could use $4 billion a week of our own money to fix and help ourselves, but we don't do that. And then $4 billion going into a 501 C three and the 501 C three controls that entity. Okay. If you remember the movie birth of a nation, if you've seen that they use Nat Turner to calm down the slaves, want him to preach to them because a lot of them were angry. And it's the same thing today. They, they use these preachers to calm down black folks. And I'm so glad that the younger generation is woken up have seen the charlatans have seen what they're doing. They're not following the scriptures because there's nothing in scriptures to teach you to showboat. Everything you seen in that video was totally against the scriptures. There was no humility in that. That was nothing that praised God. That was something to praise a man. So what's the point of all that, that he did this for these people in these churches are ate up with vanity materialism. A lot of them are running whorehouses in these churches and all they have to do is get up on Sunday morning and say, well, you know, the Bible says that judge not for if a man judge, he'll be judged also. They use those kind of scriptures to get you to shut up about holding them accountable for the things that they do. They'll come up with all kinds of scriptures about that. And black folks will accept that. You accept it and it's sickening. It's so sickening that, that, that we allow this in the black community. We allow this, this should not be allowed to go on and black folks should put a stop to this. If you're going to be a preacher, that's fine, but be like a Martin Luther King preacher, get yourself out there and challenge racism and white supremacy. Those kind of preachers, I'm a buy, I'm a support. I'm gonna say, Hey, yeah, he, he, he real about it. Because you read the scriptures, that's what everyone did was challenge the evil of that day. And these preachers ain't challenging crap. The only thing they doing is entertaining Jack leg preaching and y'all paying to be entertained. Now, if you paying to be entertained, that's fine, but don't sit up there and talk about no 10% tides. Don't talk about that. Just let people pay a little cover charge and you go in there and Jack leg preach and entertain them on Sunday. They hear some good music or whatever. You know, you do your Jack leg preaching. You tell them a little message to make them, uh, I guess, feel good about themselves that day and time. But then they go back into the real world. They got to deal with, you know, these white supremacist terrorists that you're not addressing. You're not teaching them how to navigate America. You're not giving them any kind of skills. You ain't doing crap, but yet you collect it. And black folks, we got to put a stop to that because the black church used to be a place where they would organize, strategize, and go out to fight racism and white supremacy. They were organized and strategized to fix issues in the black community. That was the history of the black church. But now look, look where it's at today. This Bartholomew Orr, he's one of many. He, he, he's not the, the, the only one. You have Thaddeus Matthews, he another one. I had him on the show cussing every five minutes. Everybody think that's funny, but he got a church. How do black folks accept that? Creflo Dollar doing what he does. Like all these, these, these preachers, like y'all sit there and, and like, that's my pastor. That's my pastor. I'm like, what? I don't understand y'all. I don't understand y'all. I don't because we just got to look at things in common sense. Common sense say that's not right. And you can't put it on God or the Bible because that's, that's not, they're not following the scriptures. They're not. Now, one thing I do respect about the Hebrew Israelites, at least they talk about quoting things out of the scriptures. I give respect for that. But these preachers are playing around, playing a game. But you know, they're taking y'all. And, and y'all sitting up there just, just going along with them. People laughing at this. People laughing. I said, I know black people, we we innovate a whole lot of things. I know that, but I hate when we start innovating foolishness. I guess what? Now everybody in the church is going to start doing what he's doing to do their sermons. That'd probably be the next thing. 
don't know. This, this, this whole situation is sickening. You got a election coming up where you got a woman that's saying that she w- would attend a public hanging and she'd be in the front row. That's Cindy Hyde Smith. Why isn't he calling her out? Why isn't he talking about it to all his members? Hey, we need to put a stop to this woman, you know, and, and, and since she's evil, I'll suggest that we do go out and vote against this woman because we don't want that kind of evil going up there. Right. Just to send a message that you did evil cannot, you know, but no, they don't address racism and white supremacy. They don't, they want to, you know, float down and, and, and get in front of the podium and, and do their thing. That's why it frustrates me because black folks, a lot of times, not, you know, a lot of them don't want liberation. They, they find it with foolishness and clowning. But leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this particular pastor out of South Haven, Mississippi. Like y'all, y'all got to check him in Mississippi. Y'all got to check him. That's not right at all. But you know, it just says a lot about us as a community because we'll invest billions of dollars a week in the black churches. Don't see no return on that at all. But we wonder why we still don't have anything.